So, as you can probably tell, this part of the video, the beginning, is different to what's coming next. This video is all about the three models that I was working on that went totally wrong. And so has this video, because I recorded two introductions when I still had my hoodie on at my desk and neither of those have worked and the battery died in the middle of it so somebody pick out and tell me which one of the three logos is possessed because everything that could have gone wrong went wrong on this one see you in a sec so as you may or may not remember if you don't remember the last video when I was doing an introduction to doing some more work for my uncle. These three locos here are meant for Uncle Jed. This one, I bought an old Triang Dock Shunter, was in yellow. This one, I bought um, to make a loco that was specifically to haul his coal wagons that I made for him with his dad's company name on it and then I found out it didn't even look like this because luckily Uncle Frank had a picture of the loco that came into the yard and if I remember when I'm editing this I will put that picture on it's a bit old to say the least and it's a little grainy but I'll put it on and it shows you some uh, Uncle Jed and his family stood around the loco and when I saw it it was this the little smoking jaw amongst other things that it's been called so we bought this so the plan was Uncle Jed asked me to look at this one to service it and it looked rough as toast which is laughable considering what it looks like at the moment because it looks even rougher but anyway he asked me to take this one and to do a service on it and I decided that I was going to paint it. Yeah, we really wish I hadn't. I painted it once and it didn't go on well at all, so I had to strip it. And then I painted it again and this time it went on really well and I was super pleased with it. I changed the colour to green, which I'm sure you can see some of that left. Um, I changed the colour to green, really pleased with it. Um, I'd added these buffers on, I bought these replacement triangle steps here and here for both sides. Um, I painted all the inside out black and then I was made me on water slide transfers up. Um, it was going to be totally fictitious uh, but I made some water slide transfers to put on the sides of it and on last Sunday morning I got up I was all ready final coat of lacquer put the transfers on fat another coat of lacquer on top of that to protect and i was done same with this that was ready final coat of lacquer and it was done and this needed a coat of gloss on because it was matte i uh, removed the old um number and the British Railway sign off the side to put something on specific to my Uncle Jed. So, they all needed a coat of lacquer, gloss lacquer, to be specific. So, this is as it was, that's as it was, that I painted, but I painted it with acrylic paint. Not really sure what went wrong, but that's already cocked up once. I sprayed all of them in Humbrol gloss lacquer shook the hell out of the cans sprayed them walked away come back 20 minutes later this one was patchy that one went white as you can see and that one all the paint started to disperse which means it was a reaction to the paint but it shouldn't have been because it was acrylic paint so as you can imagine i was none too happy there were several swear words and these things nearly ended up getting thrown out the window. But, as brassed off as I was, I thought, right, let's just start again. So, what have I done to correct the mistake? 
Well, I've given them all a first go over with um, Strip Magic. Uh, the black one and the green one, yeah, they're going to have to be repainted completely. This one I got a fair amount off and then, I, to be honest, I just got bored. I was sick to death of stripping things and I've left it. So I am going to continue. Uh, reason being that I'm not in a rush is that after this catastrophe um, and another thing I'd noticed was I don't paint with a brush so good anymore now I've only got three fingers uh, my hand's not as good as it used to be when I used to do modelling before so I, I struggle a little bit with the brush um, so last weekend after this all went Pete Tong I bought myself a mini compressor bought myself a, a spray gun uh, sorry an airbrush I should say um, can't remember the name of the company if I look it up I might stick on I think it was just over 200 quid for the compressor the line the water collector and the harder and Steenbeck um, hang on a minute it's right next to me there Adler and Steenbeck and give me a minute that's it in there it's called the Ultra 2024 I don't know bugger all about airbrushes I just did some quick reading up asked around a little bit on the internet and a lot of people said if you've never done airbrushing before give this a go a lot of people apparently seem to like it think it's really good for the beginner so I'm gonna switch to airbrushing something I never did before but I used to be pretty good at painting with this hand before and I'm not anymore unfortunately so last Sunday we placed that order it was here on Tuesday on Sunday I also played a fairly decent order with Phoenix Precision um, I bought un uh, primer, brush cleaner, thinners, matte varnish, satin varnish, gloss varnish um, and every conceivable colour that I think I'm probably ever going to use. I thought if you're going to get it, get it now and I've done with it. Didn't quite understand their postage page. Um, it just said if it's coming by Royal Mail, if, if we dispatch orders on Monday, Wednesday and Friday, unless it's Royal Mail, we can only dispatch that on a Friday. And I thought, well, okay, whatever that means. Well, here we are, it's now Saturday, the week after, and I've still got naff all. So I'm not particularly impressed with the postage, because 200 no quid's worth of paint, I would have thought from a single non-business person, should be a fairly substantial order, and I would have thought they'd be pleased to get it rushed off to that customer, but clearly not. So why they can't get their asses to the post office other than one day a week, I have no idea. But hey-ho, next time I do it, I'll just decide to go and try and find all the colours that I wanted. I mean, Peter Spares didn't have all the airbrush thinners and very each other bits and pieces. I know they haven't. They've just got their, their little tins of paint. And some of the tins I wanted bigger than the standard 14 mil tin. Anyway, I digress. So, we're not in a rush to do these because we ain't got no paint. So, what's the point in rushing? Anyway, I'm gonna, when I've got these done, I'm gonna put them back on to the motors, chassis. I'm gonna take them all three to Uncle Jed. We're going to put him on his track and we'll show you them finished running round the track. But for now, we'll stop rabbiting on about them. So, what have we done so far? Right, well, this one, this little chassis and motor, <coughs> is off the green one. It's been off, it's been thoroughly cleaned. I've took any crap out of it, I've tidied up the contacts underneath, uh, it runs really well, so I'm happy with that, that's good enough to go out. 
The next one was the one off the black one, which again, I've been over it, I've cleaned it. To be honest, this thing looks like it's hardly ever been used. Um, it came in a box. Uh, let's see if I can put my hands on it. Came in this box. The box is pretty much unmarked. There's no dog ears, it doesn't look old. I sometimes think this is maybe a new model, but hey ho. So, I've, I've gone through it and serviced it anyway, just to, to be on the safe side. So that chassis is ready to go. And then there's this monster, the Tryon. Oh boy, have we had fun with this. So, when Uncle Jed gave me it, he sent me, he said, oh, he said, the light doesn't work. I said, right, okay, that's not a problem, I'll just get a new bulb. So I didn't strip it, I just went to Peter's and I bought a new bulb. And then when I did strip it, I found that the reason it didn't work was because it never had a light in it. So Peter's happened to have a board. They happened to have the little screw that screws on to the top of the magnet housing. Um, you can see at the moment I've just got the wires from the bulb poking out of each side. I have had this thing apart. So for those of you that... Let me just zoom in. Because to be honest with you, I got to a point where I couldn't be bothered to turn the camera on in case something else went wrong and I wasted my time doing a video. So, fairly straightforward these things. There's a couple of screws in the bottom. You can undo them take the plate off you can see here in the past somebody has turn it round the right way somebody here has replaced the pickup and when I got it they were sticking out past the ends of the wheels so I've trimmed them down but anyway take this plate off freeze the wheels when you take the wheels out make sure you've made a note of which way is the front ear engine and which side of the wheels is on the right or the left it doesn't matter which just remember which way you took them out because one side has a plastic bush around the wheel and one side doesn't the side that doesn't is the negative and it earths the chassis right the one that's got the plastic bush around it is the one that these connectors are fastened to I resoldered underneath here with the wire feed that goes up for the live um, I've had all of the, the commutator out, I've cleaned everything, I have cleaned the worms and made sure they're all spotless, put grease in them, uh, cleaned up the brushes um, so that I'm happy with them. Um, and then basically all I've got to do now is put the brushes back in, which go either side here, a bit of a pig to do and then there's a spring holds them like that and it hooks around this bottom corner here now years ago when i was used to watch john's amazing trains which become chams one two three he had a habit of soldering that corner on uh, basically because it doesn't always touch so when I put this, the brushes in and the spring, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to solder the, the spring onto this copper plate just so that I know it's got a good contact and it's not hit and miss. As for the bulb, uh, basically we've got to bring one wire off which goes to live, which is this thing here. Uh, this sits down the side. Once you've got your brushes in, your springs in place, you pop this in behind the spring. Now on the spring, you've got an insulated sleeve. So that little thing has got to go behind the behind this side of the insulated sleeve. Because it's providing power without going through that clip. The other side is your neutral. I've got two options. I can either A, come from there put a little connector on and fasten it under that screw there because that screw is attached to this or 
I can come all the way around the side to that which is what holds holds this top onto the, uh, the magnet and everything which goes all the way through I could put it on there because there is a gap in here which you can't see because of my big numb fingers there's a gap down the side God how am I going to show this can't get the angle right there is a gap down these sides of the motor which you could slide a connector in I'm probably just going to go with that one I'm happy enough with that um, in the midst of everything rushing last Saturday to try and get this finished I actually put the spring down and when I came to get it I couldn't find it so I literally because I was hoping to get these things off to Uncle Jared for four o'clock yeah, sorry for some day uh, I flew to Peter's at four o'clock in the afternoon to get a replacement spring and I come back and I thought you know what I've done enough today I'll call it a day and I'll finish it in the morning um, when I got up the next morning I found the old spring sitting on the turntable with the trains which I kind of found impossible because I searched the entire desk I searched the box that I put bits in I was had one of my kids down on the floor on their hands and knees looking for it couldn't find the damn thing anywhere and there it was sitting there the next morning so sod's lot it was just another part of this whole operation driving me absolutely nuts so as I said I did start videoing all of this originally and then it's hit and miss Do you ever get the feeling that you weren't meant to work on a model? I'm in the middle of talking about how this lot's caused me loads of shit. And the battery dies. Right in the middle, I just said goodbye. Anyway. So, is there a model to all of this? <laughs> uh, I suppose so. The moral is, <laughs> don't give up. Um, I will get there. It was just annoying. I think what happened was I ended up with a bad can of spray. I'm fairly sure of that because it was funny how everything had eventually gone right, particularly with the yellow dock shunter. Uh, everything had gone right and it, all three of them went wrong with one can of Humbrol spray. So that one's, that's gone in the bin and as I said, I've switched to Phoenix. But anyway, the main thing is this was this one was to get it running and it, it, it is running I just took the spring back off and the brushes back off because I was on an hour about replacing them but when I've had a good look they're not worth replacing they've got a fair amount of meat on them so the next time you're going to see where I get them these three absolute nightmares hopefully they'll be looking nice they'll be whizzing round Uncle Jared's railroad track um, and hopefully you'll be happy with them so end of the discussion on those for now absolute pain in the backside uh, drove me absolutely berserk but hey ho there you go things don't always go to plan things can go terribly wrong and they can go terribly wrong right at the end don't give up folks just bite the bullet say a few cuss words kick the dog kick the cat and then when you've calmed down, just start all over again. It's as simple as that. Because it doesn't matter what goes wrong. You're going to have to put it right. So get on with it. Put it right and make some good out of what you've had. Um, just in case you're wondering the reason I'm not going to that lot next. The Scotsman Project. is because I've had my fill of engines going pear-shaped. I'd rather just deal with the siphon G's because it'll be easier and it won't stress my life. Um, I just want to get the siphon G's knocked up, have a project that's been a piece of cake to do and then we'll deal with these because there's a lot of work to do with the Scotsman's an awful lot. Um, and I'd rather just have a little break from playing with engines for the time being. So there you go, I'm going to shut up and stop rattling on Thank you for watching. Um, 
catch you on the next time I'm around. Bye for now, folks. <laughs>